Well, the South African Communist Party or the SACP together with the M17 party from the Democratic Republic of Congo have jointly hosted a lecture on the political and economic developments in that country. The lecture at Kasatu House in Johannesburg was to be part of Africa Month activities but was also aimed at mobilizing external intervention on the political situation in the DRC. So in February, Vice President Kuko Itambo was in Botswana seeking assistance from African leaders to find a political solution to resolve the impasse in the DRC. So for more on this, M17 Party's Vice President, Koko Itambo, is here with us, as well as SACP First Deputy General uh, Secretary, Soli Mapaila. Good to have both of you. Good welcome day. this morning live. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much for coming in as well, and welcome to South Africa. So, Kuku, let's start with you. You were in South Africa for President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa's inauguration as well, but there's so much more to your visit than just the inauguration. Talk to us about your intention in being here. Yeah, as I said, thank you so much. And uh, we, I came here since January, actually, and I've uh, been appealing all uh, SADC leaders to look at Congolese issues like an uh, urgent matter. Because I believe that if we don't go find a political solution, uh, it won't be good for Congo. Because uh, Sad um, not South African only, but all SADC leaders just understood the situation in Congo as if everything was fine. And uh, those people are talking today on behalf of uh, Congolese population are not the one we mandated to talk on our behalf. So we want uh, to address that situation for the good of the country. Good. Sally, from the SACP's perspective, what are the, what are the similarities and what are you finding in M17 that you want to work with them as well? Well, M17 was the party established by former President Laurent Kabila. Uh, on May the 17th, uh, when he, he, in 1997, when he arrived in Kinshasa uh, to remove uh, dictator Mobutu Sesseko and to lead a process for the liberation of uh, the Congo. As you know, after the death of Petrus Lumumba, the country um, went into a massive crisis uh, of genocidal proportions where the Belgians uh, almost um, murdered more, no less than 6 million Congolese which remains one of the worst uh, human uh, uh, crimes in the world, which has never been uh, brought to International Court of Justice. Uh, the Congolese have never received uh, justice in this regard. So when um, uh, President Kabila established this party uh, and led the government, unfortunately was assassinated, um, and his son uh, Joseph Kabila was then put into power. And Joseph Kabila, uh, as a military man, and later on, when he, he, he went into civilian uh, uh, democracy, uh, he ditched uh, his father's party and established his own party. Um, and that's where the problem started, because uh, when the M17 continued, which is a liberation force, uh, when they continued with the liberation struggle, they participated in the elections, and in avoidance of war, uh, Joseph Kabila refused them to take their seats, and their matter was uh, taken to uh, the AU. Uh, which found uh, the, the DRC government on the wrong, but they were never compensated. And in recently, in the, in the current elections, uh, she was a candidate um, uh, in a constituency which she won, but she was never sworn in. And I think it is this kind of things that, uh, for instance, uh, President Chisekedi, who came here to honor our inauguration, mm. um, was actually imposed on the, on the people of the DRC, as you know, uh, the Electoral Commission never announced uh, even uh, how many votes he received. They just actually declared him the winner. And, and they did so uh, across the, the country. And we're afraid that if the DRC uh, slips into violence, uh, it certainly will affect no less than uh, nine African countries. And I think that's, that's, that, that's how important, uh, for instance, the DRC is to, to Africa. Yeah. As well as you know, it's one of the richest uh, uh, countries on the African continent. This part of the reason why the imperialist forces don't want peace uh, in the DRC and they collude um, with uh, some of the local elites to try and, and, and take away the people's freedom. Indeed, and that's why you see so many people from the DRC living all over the world having um, mm -hmm. tried to get away from, from the violence that yeah, is in the DRC. Exactly. But what is the role of the AU and SADC in all of this? I guess all those organisms are just 
uh, endorsing situation. And for us, nationalists, we feel like they are more talking about our research, results, and not about uh, our people. Because everyone is looking at Congo as kind of shop where anyone can come and buy and do whatever you want. Yeah. And they don't really care about what, our, our, what is our feelings as Congolese and how all this situation is affecting our population and our economics and security, everything. So um, I don't think that uh, SEDEC, AU, EU and all international communities are really uh, working to help Congolese to move on. So you say that you've been in South Africa since January, is that, yeah. is that correct? So have you been home, have you been to the DRC? I know that you, um, you, you actually campaigned to be in Parliament mm -hmm. and how did that work out? <laughs> what happened? Um, I did, I, we did the campaign and uh, for my party, the M17, we were three, 370 uh, candidates and they just declared that all of us, none of us won. Okay, I will give the example of my circumcision and I was running both um, position yeah. like the MP, national MP and the local. For the national, they just say that I have 21,000 votes and for the local I have, no, for the local I have 21,000 votes and for the national I have zero, which means even myself, I didn't vote for myself. So with those kind of results, how can, can we accept uh, the the, the yeah. yeah how can you, you accept the legitimacy of the exactly. election and the results so and they did this everywhere not only for m17 people but for most of people who are not on the kabila's list yeah so those this is why we are saying those people are talking today on behalf of congolese and not the the one uh congolese people elected to talk to yeah. I, I'm so sorry that I have to leave it there, but I know that you're going to be giving this lecture and I hope that you, you get the support that you're looking for, especially with the help of the SACP next to you. Thank you for coming in and, and talking you. to us briefly about the situation. I know there's so more to it, but I hope this gave you a brief introduction into some of the issues in the DRC. Kukue Itambo, the Vice President of DRC's M17 party with SACP's first Deputy Secretary, uh, Soli Mapayila, on the uh, political issues in the DRC. Let's take a break. We'll be with you after this.